Okay, so what's up everyone? So today I'm going to be talking about a subject that gets me so excited and that is careers in marine biology. This field is just so exciting and there's so many super cool things that you can do. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 specific things that I've either personally had experience with in the past few years or I've done a lot of research on because I was very interested in actually pursuing them as a career. So. Anyway, if those types of things are of interest to you, if you like hearing about marine career advice or environmental career advice, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel because I often talk about those types of things. And I also wanted to add a little disclaimer to this video that the careers that I'm going to be mentioning in this video are mainly geared towards the United States, but generally speaking, these types of positions you can find in other places in the world. Just take them with a grain of salt. So the very first career that I want to talk about within marine biology is a dive safety officer. So I was actually an intern under a dive safety officer for my last semester of college, which was actually only a few months ago. So I got to see a lot of ins and outs of this kind of profession, and it's a pretty cool one. So basically a dive safety officer is in charge of all of the dive operations of a research facility or a university. So the dive safety officer I was working with, some of the typical things that he would do is maintain all of the paperwork associated with all the diving operations for our research facility at our university. And he would also maintain all of the organization of the dive locker and make sure that all of the scuba equipment was ready to go and was safe to use. He also led a safety class where he certified all of the new scientific divers for the university. And he also got the opportunity to dive all of the time. He was diving like at least once or twice each week and he was often the go-to diver if someone needed help on a specific project. So it's a really cool opportunity if you love diving. You generally only need a bachelor's for that type of position or a lot of diving experience. Generally salaries for this type of position are going to be somewhere between 25,000 up to uh, 50,000 and that's going to vary a lot from the facility or university that you're working with. Okay, so the second career option for marine biology that I want to talk about is one that you probably won't initially think of, but this is another really cool, unique kind of option that still relates to marine biology, and that is being an FWC law enforcement officer. This is the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. There's also other statewide fish and wildlife commissions but in florida there's a lot of opportunity to work in marine settings because we have so much coastline so the typical kind of job life of a law enforcement officer is going to be protecting habitats and enforcing laws out on the water they're going to be protecting the waterways making sure people are actually following the speed limit and not going into areas that they shouldn't. They're also every now and then going to have to pull over boaters, making sure that they are actually fishing according to regulation. There's also a lot of benefits with working with the government. Um, salaries typically start in at least Florida around $36,000. There's also a lot of other benefits with working with the government with a lot of job security and retirement options and other really great benefits. Okay, so the third career option within marine biology is a very typical one, and it's one that I had actually two positions in in the past few years, and that is a research assistant or research technician. So there's many, many, many different kinds of things that you can do as a research assistant. And just for example of the like wide variety of things you could do working in a lab as a technician, my first position as a research technician, I was working in a deep sea shark lab. So my job was to take shark samples collected from a survey and my job was to measure all of the, the cartilage, the spines, and um, a few other different things related to the shark for an age and growth study. Now, my job specifically was collecting all of that data and inputting it into a um, system. So that is a kind of a typical kind of workflow of a research technician. 
um, they're doing a lot of kind of like the groundwork for a lab. Uh, in my second position as a technician, I was doing a lot more involved things and it was a really cool opportunity. I was diving on uh, artificial reefs, I was taking pictures of those reefs, and I was identifying every single species that I saw in those pictures. So it was really cool. I got a few days out in the field to dive on these artificial reefs. And then back in the lab, I spent a lot of hours actually behind a computer identifying all those species, which is important to think about if you're interested in this type of career. It's not always just out in the field, diving, having fun. <laughs> so generally speaking, research technicians and research assistants are doing a lot of data measurement, data collection, and data entry and management. So that is mainly their role, and there's a lot of different ways that that can actually look based on whatever project that you are specifically working on. Okay, so the fourth job option within marine biology is something that you might not typically think of, but is really cool and really integrated with this field, and that is public relations. So public relations specialists or public relations coordinators are going to be the ones managing social media accounts and managing kind of like the news outlets. At my research facility that I worked with at my university, there was a public relations specialist and their job was to run all of the social media accounts and generate all of these exciting stories related to all of the research that we actually did. This kind of job is a really cool opportunity to do something creative and advocate for the types of things that we do in marine science. Typical salaries for this type of position can range anywhere from 40 all the way up to $70,000. Um, there's going to be a lot of range with this based on the organization that you're working with. Okay, so the next two jobs I'm going to talk about are related to non-governmental organizations. And if you're not familiar what those are, they're basically nonprofits, and they are working towards some social or environmental cause. So there's many NGOs out there. Non-governmental organization is the same as an NGO. But there's many NGOs out there that are working towards marine issues and raising awareness for them. I was actually able to work at one in 2017 with the Whale Shark and Oceanic Research Center. Absolutely phenomenal experience and I, it's, it's such a fulfilling field. So one position that you could have within an NGO focused on marine related issues is an outreach coordinator. And outreach coordinators, their main role is to do outreach with the community. So kind of similar to the public relations uh, position that I was talking about in the last job option, they are working with the community and advocating for the organization. So they may be managing the social media accounts, they may be writing newsletters for the NGO, or they might be reaching out to the community and planning events with the community. At the NGO that I was at in 2017, the outreach coordinator was planning events with the local schools that were surrounding the organization and we would go into classrooms and teach them about plastic pollution, we would teach them about endangered species and that kind of thing. So the outreach coordinator is advocating for marine science issues to the community and on social media platforms and on the websites and if you love to advocate and you have some creative ability, this can be a really fulfilling role and also you get to talk with the community a lot and really be a part of the front lines of change. Okay, so the next position that I wanna talk about that is still related to non-governmental organizations and NGOs is you can be a program scientist or marine biologist with an NGO and the reason why this is a really cool position and this is really just coming from my experience with the marine scientist. I was able to communicate a lot with, with the um, NGO that I was working at in 2017. It was a very small NGO, but um, generally the lifestyle of his life as a marine scientist on um, a small island developing country at an NGO was getting to have a lot of freedom with how he was going about his objectives as a marine scientist and he was able to work directly with a lot of interns and a lot of volunteers to help execute that research on the reef and on the island and once some of that data had been collected and it had been processed 
being at an NGO and being so integrated with the community, he had lots of opportunity to bring that science to the community and present it, which was so cool to be not only a scientist, but also someone of outreach, someone that's working with stakeholders. It's a really cool opportunity to be just on the front lines of change within the world. So a typical salary for this type of position, again, is going to range so much because NGOs can be super small, like the one I was in in Honduras, only had three or four staff members, and there's NGOs that have hundreds of staff members and have a lot more funding coming into them. So salaries can go anywhere from 15,000 a year up to 70,000, even up to 100,000 a year based on the income of the nonprofit. And because they're nonprofits, salaries can be kind of crazy too because all the funding comes from donations and grants and other funding sources because they are not for profit. So that's definitely something to consider if you are considering a job within an NGO. Although it can be extremely fulfilling and extremely rewarding. Another job that I really want to mention, I really want to advocate for is becoming a middle or high school teacher and being able to teach either biology or marine biology specifically. This can be an extremely rewarding experience and I heavily considered pursuing this a year or two ago when I was still figuring out all my career options because there's just a lot of benefits with it. You get to work very intimately with up to 30 to 40 students and you get just all the freedom in the world to talk about what you are passionate about. And this is another great thing to consider is that being a high school and middle school teacher, this is a widely available job that you can find literally anywhere in the world because educators are always needed and educators for the sciences tend to be in higher demand. So salaries for a high school or middle school teacher are going to range a lot, but generally state to state, they stay pretty similar. In Florida, something actually really cool happened where the governor just signed a huge bill to fund so much more money into them. And now the starting salary has been raised to $47,000, which is really exciting. And hopefully more states move in this direction because educators everywhere are commonly underpaid. But generally speaking, salaries range from anywhere from $25,000 up to $80,000 in the more expensive states with more expensive costs of living. Okay, so another position I love to talk about is an aquatic veterinarian. So I actually used to be a pre-veterinary student for two to three years in my undergraduate career. I really wanted to be a veterinarian and it took me a while to give up that dream but I was so interested in pursuing marine biology and protecting the environment. So an aquatic veterinarian was kind of like the dream. So I've done a lot of research on this type of job and it's a really cool one. An aquatic veterinarian is basically going to be commonly working at an aquarium and they are going to be the person looking after the fish, the large mammals, the large reptiles, and they are going to be doing some very cool hands-on checkups with these very unique, cool animals. They're going to be measuring the water quality, making sure all of the nutrients are okay. They're also going to be monitoring the food and making sure that all of the animals that are being taken care of at a specific aquarium are going to be well fed and having proper nutrients. And it's not an easy position to attain. There are very few positions of aquatic veterinarians. However, there are some. They are just, it can be really difficult to find the schooling for it because it's so unique and it can be difficult to find residencies and actual positions. However, the job does exist. There is also another type of aquatic veterinarian that doesn't work specifically with um, aquariums. They might do um, like a private practice kind of thing where people actually take their fish to go see a veterinarian. This actually is a thing, believe it or not. And it actually, I mean, it makes kind of sense. If you're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on koi fish, you want to make sure that they're actually healthy. So there is a profession where people take in their fish and various aquatic animals to a private veterinarian. 
Okay, so the last job I'm gonna talk about within marine biology is definitely the big one, the one that everyone wants to be when they are a little kid, and that is the full out marine biologist at a research institution or a university. So a professor can do many different things, but generally speaking, they are going to have some level of coursework that they are actually teaching and they're going to have some level of research that they are conducting themselves. Sometimes they're 100% research, sometimes they're 100% teaching, but most of the time they're going to have a balance of both. The lifestyle of a professor is extremely busy, but it is extremely fast paced and it can be very exciting. So these are the people that usually they'll spend some portion of the year in the field. This can be anywhere in the world. This can be at the bottom of the ocean. It can be out on the open sea. It can be in Antarctica or it can be in the Galapagos. There's many, many different places that a biologist can work. It all depends on what they are specifically interested in doing. So this is why it is really desirable for many people that are interested in marine biology to pursue because once you're a professor you have a lot of freedom to pursue exactly what you want to teach about it and explore it and research it so marine biologists are going to spend a lot of their time writing grants and getting funding this is a very very important part of being a marine biologist you really have to prove yourself they're also going to spend a lot of time writing reports and actually analyzing the data they collect. It's actually a very small portion of time that they are actually in the field doing things like tagging sharks or chasing stingrays or dolphins or whatever in the field. I mean, they get to do some very cool things and they get to do those things, but it's only a small part of the year. So definitely recognize that you have to love science. You have to love the whole grind of getting funding, getting people excited about what you do, and actually coming up with a whole plan to go into the field and then spending almost a whole year working on the things that you learned and collected during that time. So it's also important to recognize you need to have a PhD to usually get to this point. But once you have got, actually gotten to the point of being a professor, the salary is quite nice compared to all of the other jobs that I mentioned in this video. According to the data from the American Association of University Professors, an entry level professor is going to be making close to $72,000. A full professor is going to be making around $100,000. Although it is incredibly hard to get to that point, once you're there, it's a very comfortable kind of position. You usually have lifetime job security. That's what's called tenure, but it, it can be very difficult to get there. Super cool career, but um, definitely lots of things to think about um, if you're thinking about pursuing the whole, the whole thing, the whole marine biology thing. <laughs> Okay, so before I end this video, I want to give some really incredible resources for finding these careers. There's a lot of things that have been really useful to me in actually finding opportunities within marine science, and I wanna share some of those. The first one is Coralist. So Coralist was started by NOAA back, I think it was 25 years ago, but it is a really cool email list that people contribute to saying different opportunities that are happening with, within marine science. This could be internships, really cool papers that have recently been published. This can be scholarship opportunities or it can be jobs. So definitely look at that resource. It's been so useful for me. Another really great resource for keeping an eye out for these ty types of opportunities is Ecolog. This was started by the Ecological Society of America and same kind of deal, except this is within ecology. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope that you got something out of this. I know when I was an undergraduate, when I was a high schooler, I thought the only job out there was to actually be a research professor at an institute doing marine biology, but there are so many jobs out there where you can be pursuing your passions and doing what you are passionate about. And I hope that this video lets you know a little bit more about what's out there. So if you found this video useful, please give it a like. It helps me out a lot as a new YouTuber. And please stay tuned for more videos like this in the future. Please let me know some comments in the section below, the comment section below 
of different things you'd like to see related to marine science or environmental science or anything, whatever you're feeling. And anyway, I'm talking a lot. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See you in the next video.